Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Misfits Racing League broadcast. My name is Trifium, and of course, joining me as always is none other than Unicorn. Unicorn, Tier 2 action today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Looking forward to it, seeing how Tier 2 pans out on Baku. Obviously, we've already had one race here. We can see how the second one here goes. No safety cars last time, so we'll see what it is. Yes, yes. Good day to the chat. Of course, looking at the chat, looking for your predictions throughout this race cast. Of course, let's take a look at the circuit we're going to be jumping into today. It is none other than the Baku Street Circuit, of course, and we saw the EU drivers take to the circuit on Tuesday for a very exciting race. And now it is Tier 2 in their turn up at the plate, if you will, to put on some fireworks here around this uh, very tight circuit of course these drivers have already gone through seven rounds of racing action they kicked things off in australia and we've moved all the way through up the original slated f1 2020 calendar and we've uh, most recently seen these drivers do battle on well around the streets of monte carlo in the monaco grand prix now we are here for Azerbaijan next week will be in Canada following that France Austria as well and that will round out the first half of our season here for MRL action but of course after that lots of racing happening and so many different grids now for the league we have the British Grand Prix Hungary Belgium Italy Singapore Russia Japan the US Mexico Brazil and as well Abu Dhabi for this season and so much racing action coming of course here are the drivers who are going to be lining up Full-time in Tier 2, Kai Bicini and Jay for Mercedes, A2K and Yasko for Ferrari. Gadwin and Liam over at Red Bull with Skybits and Little Bear for McLaren. Ali Avci and Undertaker F for the Renault squad. Adrian and Wisp over at AlphaTauri with Robo and Itzamax at the Racing Point team with its, well, Maxim B and Extreme for Alfa Romeo. Crampy and Max Inkster over at Haas. And Williams, it's Domi and Squid, of course, rounding out this grid. Let's take a look at how things went last round after Monaco. We'll have to take a look at the standings. And, of course, it's Kai Bacini leading things right now for the Mercedes team in first with 78 points. And Domi not too far from him, as well as Liam there. Domi and Liam second and third, respectively, rounding out your top three. Jay just outside that top three. He was leading the championship for some time with his early wins, but now he is uh, falling off due to, uh, well, some things keeping him away from racing. Hate to see it, but personal life comes first. Of course, it is Mercedes leading this championship. Now, big news. Kai Bacini serving a race ban as well as Max Inkster. And, of course, race bans are given to drivers who accumulate the minimum amount of points required on their license to get one. And, unfortunately... Those drivers not being incident-free throughout this first half of the season. So they are serving race bans today. And uh, there was quite a few penalties and issues coming through Monaco. Of course, Monaco, you hate to see that kind of contact. But it is a circuit that breeds collisions, at the very least, in the virtual space for us. So, stewards, not impressed, especially considering today is Baku. So, with all of that being said, I think Unicorn, we're now ready to go racing here around, uh, well for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Yeah, I think we are we're expecting anyone else at this point, so indeed it's time to give up the call and see uh, if everyone's ready. But yeah, looking forward to seeing Baku in action again here this evening. Also, we've got the tricky castle section, and also we've got the interesting start to this race the very short run down into turn one yes turn two both right hand uh 90 degree not right handers yeah this circuit uh as i said on our cast tuesday definitely one of my favorites to cast i thoroughly enjoy watching the racing around the streets of baku so hopefully the tier two grid able to put on quite the show of course Tier 1 action later as well this evening. I've got uh, two opportunities to get that adrenaline pumping action in, but I don't think that I'll have to wait too long, to be very honest. No, absolutely. We had such an exciting start to the race on Tuesday. Just non-stop action throughout the entirety of the first lap because there really is no sort of off point here. You have to 
either be battling with someone on the first up or you have to be sort of backing out and there's a little bit of chicken that can go on into some of these corners because you cannot go too wide through certain sections of this track. So it needs to be a very interesting and unique sort of prospect because it's not a slow circuit like Monaco with the tight walls, but it's still got those walls nice and close to the drivers. Yes, now we have 17 drivers on this grid. I think we may need to restart this lobby, though, because it's, uh, well, was it on invite only or was it on friends only now? I think we may have to do this again. Not entirely sure here. I'm going to just check really quick. Bear with us for a moment. No drivers out on circuit just yet. That person that is past one of the... We see no one's leaving the garages of yet, so nothing to report on track, but... Okay, we're gonna get a restart going here. We're gonna get a restart going here. Really quick, we're gonna get all of these drivers back in here, because unfortunately we need to have another lobby made. Unfortunately, my mistake as the host, not setting things to invite only just ahead of when we began, so a random driver is able to join, and that can cause its own issues if I don't sort it out right away, so... For those of you racing in tier 2 action that happen to be viewing this stream, jump back on in. Strifium is the host, if you weren't already aware. Of course, Unicorn can send out invites in just a moment. We're going to get this dialed in right quick because, well, we want the racing action to begin uninterrupted. And uh, a random driver, not the case. All right, Unicorn, I have you invited here, and please help me out in getting the drivers lined up here. Apologies for the delays, everybody. We just want to ensure that no random drivers join our grids in progress. Of course, there is a unique process to joining the Misfits Racing League. If you're interested, jump on in our Misfits Discord. Of course, the Misfits community, the home of the Misfits Racing League, the base, the foundation. If you guys are interested in just joining a great community filled with racers, enthusiastic about F1, motorsports in general, it's a great place to be, a great place to learn, especially if you're new to the game as well. Not just if you're trying to be super fast in the league. Yeah, the lobby is populating nice and quickly, which is what we love to see. Okay. There we go. I do believe that is everyone invited. Everyone just wanting to hop back in now, but... Yes, it's very, very unfortunate that we had to get that restart done, but I'm confident that that was the right call to make, considering had that driver not forfeited the choice and opportunity to race, that could have been very bad indeed. Just waiting on a couple people and then we should be ready to get underway. So someone might have had an issue there. Someone's just left the lobby, but yeah. I think it's just we can get everything underway as quickly as possible. 
Again, everyone in the chat, sorry for the delays, of course. Just wanted to get you guys the best racing we can. Wanted to make sure that there was no unknown... Uh, well, what's the word I'd like to use? Unknown... Entities. Entities. There we go. There Thank you. That is perfect for what I was trying to get across. Uh, we also don't want people leaving and joining when they realize that maybe it is a uh, league race because that could cause lag for those who should be here and be incredibly distracting. So I believe we're waiting for two more drivers. I think it might be three. I don't think It's a Max was in the original lobby, uh, but he is now, which is very nice. The more the merrier, obviously. I think those who should be here, but let's see who are we waiting for? Well, we have one less driver than what we had previously. And 30 seconds to go now, remaining for these drivers to get in the lobby. Okay, and we are good to go. Readying up. Yes, unfortunately with the restart, that does cause issues in itself for people getting back into the lobby, but should drivers fail to get back into the lobby, unfortunately we cannot just wait on one driver. We have an entire lobby of people here that are itching to race here around the streets of Baku. Yeah, and I think we've just about got everyone back as well, just on time. So, we do now have 18 drivers, so. Yes, and as a result of the restart, I have given been given a weather report, and it was going to be dry. So, we are going to have a dry race here in Baku. Okay, back again, Baku, 17 drivers on the grid. we have Gazi Egg making his reserve debut, It's a Max, Undertaker, Robbo, Adrian, Skybits, Domi, Jones, Dirk Chocolate is in the mix today as a reserve driver, you may recognize him from of course his stream or his time in the EU grid, he's already raced this circuit once this week, so perhaps maybe a leg up, and his teammate is actually in here as well, that's Cotter's intent. Normally, they will both be in the Red Bulls. However, today, a Merck and a Ferrari at play. Liam, however, in the Red Bull in 11th. Wisp in 12th. Godwin in 13th. Crampy in 14th. Lamp making a reserve debut as well over there in the other Ferrari. Squid in the Williams currently in 16th there on the timing tower with Little Bear in the McLaren. Partnering Skybits. So 17 minutes remaining here in qualification. All of these drivers getting setups dialed in. And getting things set ahead of this uh, very unique Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I love these races. Yeah, absolutely. And qualifying, not nowhere near as important as it is in Monaco, but obviously still just as critical as it is around any other track. So, interesting to see. Also, a lot of drivers here 
going already on the medium combat tyres. I believe on Tuesday we saw pretty much everyone start the race on the soft. So, interesting to see that that's being toyed with here this evening. Well, a lot of drivers out on those softs. Only three choosing to start this qualifying session potentially on those mediums. Domi, the only one to leave the pit lane on them. But Undertaker, and he's now heading out as well. And there's Gauzieg in first on the timing tower yet to set a lap under all of these drivers. But the first driver that is going to be getting a lap in here. And it would uh, appear that he's just a, a common customer here on the camera. Is uh, Crampy in the Haas coming through into the castle section now through turn seven. He's invalidated on that inside curbing. Yeah, obviously not too big of a deal invalidating during the outlap because it doesn't mean anything, but doesn't want to be doing that on his actual flyer, so he needs to keep it clean, obviously. Now, something that we didn't get to see in the EU race around here in Baku, and I know it's wild when you may hear this, ladies and gentlemen, but of course there were no physical safety cars on Tuesday. We'll have to see if we get anything of the sort here for Tier 2 action, but it was where Crampy's flying through now in this house where we had a two-car collision between Energy and Cotters, where Energy, unfortunately, I think he caught a little bit of inside curbing. He spun his car around into the wall, and Cotters, unfortunately, uh, well... Removing both of the cars from this race equation in EU on Tuesday, and they were out. So, no physical safety car from that. So, we'll have to see. The threshold is apparently very high as Crampy now heading down through into turn two. A little bit of a brush with the wall there, and that is a very regular place for these drivers to brush the wall. I've seen it time and time again. A lot of front right end plates coming off through the exit of that turn. Yeah, someone who's had an issue, Jones, out of turn one, has lost his entire front wing on that Alfa Romeo, so he's not had a good start to his session, whether there was contact with another car that put him into the wall, or whether it was just a driver error, I don't know, but not a good start at all for him. Saw Crampy, he, uh, he didn't remove the front right end plate on turn two's exit, but he definitely did on turn three, and it looks like these, str these drivers might be struggling to get some temperatures into their tires, and now there's a big issue. Crampy is out in Castle, there's another driver who's coming by through, and that's Adrian. Trying to move through on him. Fortunately, nothing too major going on there. It's very, very tricky for these drivers when coming through Castle because there's absolutely no ghosting enabled here in these races. The driver is required to slow down through yellow flags. Yeah, you, once you're out of Castle as well, Crampy, he can't even just sit there, unlike elsewhere on the track where you just sort of sit make sure you don't become a problem for anyone else you have to try and get out the way as quickly as possible because you are just blocking the track there so yeah a little bit of a difficult one through that castle section well it looks like cotters is going to be the first driver maybe adrian adrian gets the first lap in a 141 flat but it's going to be cotters i think able to improve no a 142.4 domi on the medium compound tire throwing the gauntlet down that's a 140.1 out of the williams camp and lamp is showing up to play as well a 139.9 the first driver to set sub 140s here on the soft compound tire he's in the ferrari currently on provisional pole yeah, the medium's not looking too bad either. Undertaker, another 140.8. So seven tenths off of Domi's time as Gadwin goes 140.3 in the Red Bull. So a lot of different times, but the medium's not looking too uncompetitive at this stage of qualifying, but still a lot of drivers yet to set times. Yeah, one of those drivers who didn't have the best finish through Baku on Tuesday. Dirk Chocolate looking for redemption today. He's in the Merc. As I always call him, the Dirk Merck, and he's flying down through into turn 15 here. And turn 15, very tricky, of course. They call the inside curving here the eSports curve because of how it was taken in 2019. Of course, I haven't seen too many drivers taking turn 15 the same way here in Baku this time around. But of course, Dirk coming down through Sector 3 right now. Very, very tight bit of circuit here. Very difficult to manage wheel to wheel, but so much speed required to carry through here. So you get a good exit into this pit straight. DRS wide open now. Revving out as high as he can in 8th gear. What's the time going to be? 
It's a 140 flat and he's into P3 in the Mercedes and as of right now your current reigning tier 2 champion Liam on the soft compound tire into provisional pole in the Red Bull a 138.8 from him and it is a Red Bull Ferrari Mercedes top 3 at the moment with a Williams of Domi not too far behind. Yeah Liam with an exceptional lap time there about a second faster or just over a second faster than anyone else right now as Wisp he's flying again on medium tires so interesting to see where he stacks up compared to the likes of Domi and Undertaker as well as obviously everyone else on the soft compound tires uh, it's also worth pointing out if drivers are listening and aren't actively monitoring discord after Crampy's incident through castle it has been allowed that you can reset to track through castle if you're completely stuck Crampy's just question that one so to avoid as many incidents as possible through there obviously resetting to track mostly being not being permitted in MRL but obviously that's one of the few sections where a stuck car can cause a massive crash in the race as Wisp a 140.7 on those mediums in the Alpha Towery yeah, Wisp and Adrian in those Alpha Terriers, they showed fantastic pace and strategization in Monaco last week. We'll have to see if we see it again here. They were running 1-2 at one point in that Monaco race. Meanwhile, it's Skybits in the McLaren. I know he absolutely loves Baku. He's had some fantastic races around Baku in his league racing time and uh we'll have to see how he goes here in tier two of course he does have a, a podium this season already we'll have to see if he's able to continue on with that Ooh, a brush outside of turn 15 there and that's something that we've seen a few drivers do already but of course he's missing that front right end plate now it's going to be difficult to come through this tight sector three section and the thing with this is when you're missing that end plate you lose so much yeah the problem as well is it's such a high speed corner and they're sort of deceptive it looks like a straight and if you come around there too fast without that downforce you can really just swing your car into the wall and that's when you can lose a wheel and dnf chosen to set that time regardless and he was good enough for p5 Regardless of the damage on the front right, now he is a 140.3 currently on this grid right now. A little bit of a tire difference in the top 10 at the moment as well. Jones in the Alfa Romeo in uh, had the front wing damage out of turn one early on in the session, now invalidating his lap, and we are just over halfway through, and he's yet to sell a valid lap time, so he needs to see what he can do to get a lap time on the board a little bit of toe action coming out of the alpha tari camp right now wisp came back around and actually improved his time ahead of skybits into p5 he's done two laps now he set the 140.2 the most recent on those yellow rim tires yeah crampy now obviously his first look lap ended in castle now his second one still valid. He's going to cross the line. It's a 139.8 for the Haas. Second place. Still pretty much a second off of Liam's best, though. There as well. In the McLaren. He's coming down towards the start finish line. It's a 140 flat for him. That puts the McLaren fifth. Just behind Dirk Chocolate by five hundredths of a second. A lot of drivers having issues, I think, with tire temperatures here. Not a lot of drivers uh, able to get through clean on some of these 90-degree turns here. We've seen it in turn 2, 3, and 15 a lot throughout this race. And we saw Crampy go into Castle as well. So it could be that they're not getting in that grip that they want here around the streets of Baku. I remember on Monday we had a bit of a practice race where I participated, and that was one of the major issues. Getting those tires up to temperature was extremely, extremely difficult. Yeah, and obviously tire temperature being so critical. If you have a little bit of contact during that formation lap, that could really ruin the start of this race for you. So, driver's going to be on 
their best behaviour, so to speak, on that formation lap to avoid any contact with anyone else. Liam flying provisional pole sitter right now, looking to improve on that 138.880. As Domi takes pole from around 138.4, so four tenths faster than the Red Bull. Yeah, and Liam's down through sector one, so he's uh, not going to be happy to know that that pole has been taken from him while he's on a lap that he may not be able to improve. Yeah, and Domi was on the medium tires as well, and he wasn't far off the likes of Wisp, so it'll be interesting to see whether Wisp can switch onto these soft tyres, if he so desires, and challenge for some of those top spots. Now, of course, most notably, Liam won this race last season, if I'm not mistaken. It was a fight down to the line, and the fight was with none other than the current championship leader, Mr. Kai Bacini. Kai Bacini and him fighting throughout the last season in Tier 2 as well. And, uh, well, they are very close in pace. Of course, Kai, a little bit of drama in that race. Ended up seeing him disqualified. There was a bit of contact come the line, and, uh, well, Liam got it in the end. But it was a very, very wild race finish. Of course, one of the most notable finishes in the history of the league. But Kai Bacini not able to race today due to the ban that he is serving we'll hope to see him next week drama dope chocolate he's just had an issue through castle as well he's lost his entire front wing just trying to get out of the way of cars as quickly as possible as not to interrupt their lap but he's gonna have to just avoid this lap and go out again with the new front wing now, two drivers that haven't had an opportunity to set laps here in Baku are the two Alfa Romeos, surprisingly enough. Jones right now on a flyer. He's coming down through turns five and six. Yeah, and Extreme's just come into the pit lane. So he won't be setting a lap time as of yet either, so... Now these Alfa Romeos need to put some times on the board. Ooh, and a big drift out from Jones coming up through Castle Section, and that's probably one of the trickiest areas for grip here. He's just looking for traffic. Good on him. Making sure he doesn't pull out in front of anybody. Now Skybits, he's coming down through into turn three. He's in the McLaren. He's going to be looking to improve on a 140.3. He's currently in ninth, wanting to close that gap to Little Bear. Little Bear, a 140 flat the time from him. He's in seventh, not too far behind Dirk Chocolate. Yeah, we're already seeing now pretty much everyone switching onto these soft tires. The only as uh, a gauzy egg. I know 142.8 from him as Drivitz has invalidated his lap. And not long left in the session, so he's gonna really race around to get back into the pit lane or just conserve. Although he's still full ERS deployment, so it looks like he might just be coming into the pits, get a fresh set of softs and go out for one last try. I don't know if he's got time for that though. You never know with that timing desync that's been so regularly occurring here in these qualifying sessions. Of course, there's about a two minute desync, if I'm not mistaken. One one and a half to two minute desync between what you see on our qualifying clock and the qualifying clock of these racers. But uh, as Mikael would normally point out at this point in the qualifying session it is definitely the calm before the storm drivers down one through eight all in the pit lane yet not a single one of them has blinked to come out except now the mercedes of dirk chocolate who is going to lead that big group of cars out here wanting to get out and get a lap in as quickly as he can he needs to improve on that 140 flat in order to get himself up into the well the further positions yeah, and someone right now, Squid, he's about seven tenths up on his current best, which is a 140.4. So he's going to propel himself into the 139s if it all goes well. And there it is. Fourth place for him, a 139.5. Another driver we always love to talk about, Gadwin. 
I would consider him probably one of the most veteran drivers on this grid. He has, uh, well, quite the ability behind the wheel of that Red Bull that we most commonly see him drive. And of course, strategizing, you know he's got a little bit of experience because the strategies he happens to pull out in these races, they net him positions and they are odd. And I have to say, he has had a very good season in the sense of getting points for Red Bull and his teammate Liam not having too bad a time either. Yeah, Undertaker's just improved by one and a half seconds, which puts him into third place at the moment. So Deadwin has now invalidated his lap, so... Is he going to go around again? It's probably his only opportunity at setting a faster lap. Yeah, he brushed it in Sector 2, and he was fortunate not to take any damage. It looks like he is going to come into the pit lane, and he's going to just stick with what he's got, unless he's able to just fly around but i don't think that will be the case of course it's going to be a p12 for him his current lap isn't even slow at all even the slightest of course if you look at the gap to leader right now you have a little bit of a a gap between that first and fourth but coming down through fifth all the way through down in this grid you pretty well have only a second separating those drivers and uh at least down into 13th so I think we're going to see a lot of overtaking action on the opening of this race until things space themselves out a little bit. Of course, hopefully no drama, which can most definitely be the case here around the streets of Baku. But a good number of drivers now out on flying laps. We'll have to see if there's any drama that comes out of the finale and qualifying here because guess what? That timing desync is about to come into action. 0, 05, 0, 04, 0, 03. Drivers are going to start taking checkered flags, which means cars are going to be on this grid. Like example, Extreme has taken the checkered flag while drivers are going to be beginning hot laps. So we'll have to see how that actually happens for a few of these racers because it's caused collisions previously in leagues and MRL races past. Dirt chocolate flying pretty much identical to his previous best lap. He's down by 0.014. So then he's able to improve through sector three. This is gonna be the first of these front runners to set a lap. It is a little improvement. It puts him seventh, and that was by 0.08. So you can see just how tight this grid is at the moment. A little bear. Flying down in the McLaren, he's on an invalidated lap. He saw a four-tenth improvement, but of course the lap wasn't going to get him anything. Skybit's flying down into turn seven now. Had to pass a bit of traffic there. Yeah, Wisp is on a very impressive looking lap here. About 1.2 seconds up out of sector two, and that could net him a potential... P3. Uh, yeah, P3, I think. And it is P3, a 138.768. His best times before now on the mediums. He comes across on the softs. A very quick time from him. Good job. And Jones in the fourth. And there goes Lamp up into fifth. And now Crampy, it would appear, is going to be the next person to try and improve upon their time, although it looks like he's going to come into the pit lane not happy with it. I think most people here, it's just the likes of Domi who has Bravo. avoided his lap. is charging in the racing point now. <laughs> but it looks like he is very up on that time considering I'm reading a sector Readout of uh, 205868, and he's going to just take the flag there. Dirk Chocolate. Not entirely sure if he's running or if he's going to be coming into the pit lane or what the story is with the Dirk Merc, if you will. But of course, if you are just tuning in to this race, my name is Strifium. Of course, joining me is Unicorn, and you are here watching Tier 2 Misfits Racing League action, currently on board with the Mercedes today of Dirk Chocolate. Of course, he's in a reserve role, but if of course, if you're new, hit that follow button because we do racing on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, as well as most Saturdays following F1 weekends. And we have a lot of racing for you today. We are just about to jump into a 50% distance Baku. And following this race at 5.15 p.m. CDT, 11.15 BST for those out in the UK, we have 
the tier one racing here around Baku as well. So lots of action today. I hope you are enjoying and uh, well, get those bathroom breaks in, get the popcorn because you're about to witness the race start here for what I love to call the Battle of Baku. Yeah, it was a hectic first lap earlier on this week. Yeah, Domi on pole position. Liam in the Red Bull. We've seen him do some fantastic racing around here before in season two, as well as Wisp in the AlphaTauri, rounding out your top three. Jones in fourth, Lamp in fifth as the other reserve making his debut. Undertaker in sixth, Adrian seventh, Squid in eighth, Crampy in ninth with Dirk Chocolate, rounding out your top ten in the Mercedes. As we just load in, get everyone settled into their cars. I do believe it's an 18 car grid this evening. 18 car grid in Baku. Fantastic. You love to see solid driving lineups heading through these races. We saw pretty much full grids through Monaco as well, which is a rarity in itself. So, very happy with that. The attendance has been fantastic. As we jump in, 20 seconds to go for these racers to get these setups dialed in. Of course, they need to make sure they get the right fuel load, get their strategies sorted out with none other than the infamous Jeff, the iconic and loved Jeff. <laughs> the stereotypical default race engineer, of course, for all of these racers. A few of them may have engineers of their own, though, tuning into the stream. If you're joining us as an engineer, welcome. We greatly appreciate that. We, of course, encourage any kind of teamwork or strategizing that these drivers can put forth. Of course, we have our formation lap. We're going to take you through this grid one more time. Domi on pole position. Liam in second. That's Wisp in third. Jones in fourth. Lamp rounding out your top five in the Ferrari. Undertaker in sixth. Adrian in seventh. Squid in eighth with Crampy in ninth. Getting DSQ'd off the line here in the formation lap. There's always got to be one or two. Dirk Chocolate in 10th position in the Mercedes as a reserve today. Of course, you could find him normally on Tuesdays. He's in the MRL EU grid with Little Bear over at McLaren in 11th. Cotters, Dirk Chocolate's regular Red Bull teammate over in 12th. And the other Ferrari at Skybits in 13th. Gadwin in 14th. It's a Max 15th. Robo 16th. Gazi Egg and Extreme as well rounding out this grid. Looking for a very, very exciting race here from all of these racers. And, of course, we'll have to see. Give us your predictions in the chat. Who is taking the podium on this one? Do we have any, well, one millionth percenters in here giving the Stroll, Gasly, and Sainz podium a nod? Or are we going to see something entirely different for this race in Baku? Of course, let us know. And, of course, something not completely off the table. And, Unicorn, I'm sure you can comment on this a little bit as well. Safety cars. Let's get some predictions for those. Yeah, and also something we didn't see last time out in Baku is the tyre strategies. Obviously, those in the top 10 all on soft tyres, but out of that, there's quite a lot of races, four on the hards and two on the mediums. So we'll see how those play into this. Last, on, on Tuesday, we had pretty much everyone running on softs at the start of this race. But like you said, safety cars as well. They could play a role here, especially if this first lap is quite as hectic and people aren't able to back out of that castle section. We saw Fraser go into the wall at the start of the castle section, so he was out of the way and didn't cause any contact with the car behind. But yeah, safety car, a possibility, but from what we saw on Tuesday, it's pretty hard to tempt it out of the pit lane around Baku in the 2020 game. A curious thing to note here, I've got it from the chat. Kai Bacini, the championship leader, Using that time wisely. He's being very helpful in Dirk Chocolate's supporting role today as Dirk Chocolate on the grid in place of Kai. So Kai making sure that uh, Mercedes gets some kind of direction here. Dirk Chocolate in good hands. So we'll see how that goes. Shout out to Kai. Not uh, happy to see you on the grid. Well, happy to see you here. Not happy to see you not on the grid. But of course, penalties are a thing. Take us through this race, Unicorn. Indeed, here we go. There are, well, the light sequence restarting itself. They're all lit as we wait for all the drivers. They're all revving up now. And Wisp's got a drive through penalty. I believe someone else got one as well for jumping the start, but it's an excellent start for Domi. I don't know whether he's jumped it as well, but it is Liam up the inside of Wisp through turn one. 
Follow that, a lot of end plates flying around, and I think that's also a breakboard as well. We've got a VSC here. Everyone's still moving at the moment, but I think just the sheer quantity of collisions. And now we've got five-second penalties for collisions up and down the grid. Crampy got one. I don't know who else got one, but oh my goodness, the notifications at the bottom of the screen there all over the place. But now VSC, when is it going to end? And that's going to sort of play into the hands of the likes of Domi. He's already got a 2.3 second lead. Let's see. Did he jump the start as well? Well, it's I, we saw Domi in EU as a reserve driver, if I'm not mistaken, on Tuesday. He had a rocket launch off the line here in Baku from fourth into first in turn one. So maybe he just has the... Uh, the touch on these race starts and there's a bit of an issue there that was jones having a bit of a brush with the wall coming up through castle here and now it is wisp looking at him wisp of course with that drive through penalty not going to be happy he did a great job in quali but he's up on the inside of jones now and it's his teammate adrian into the rear looks like that's jones struggling a little bit and adrian i don't know if he got any damage we'll jump on and see Looks like he might be okay, but he's under threat right now. That's Lamp in seventh position, and not a lot of these drivers are giving anyone an opportunity to breathe. Adrian very tight to the rear of Jones right now, and we saw him brush the rear of that Alpha already, and Lamp has the front row seat to this action. Jones, Adrian, wheel to wheel. It's Lamp trying to go three wide through here, and he was on the inside, and he just had a brush with the wall there, and who is going to get out in front? That looks like Wisp opting to stay out here. And that's going to be Jones into the pit lane right off the hop here. And who's come in? So it's going to be Domi, Wisp, and Jones. And it appears that he may have jumped the start after all, Unicorn. Yeah, the race director not saying who jumped in and who didn't. But yeah, it looks like Domi, he served a drive through. It was either for jump at the start or maybe he picked up a speeding penalty under that VSC. But it's now Liam in need of this race. Squid up six places from the start of this race. He's up in second and Adrian in that Alpha Tower. He's still battling with Lamp, and he does have a little bit of end plate damage, but nothing compared to the Alpha Romeo of Jones, who they were fighting, but he's holding off Lamp for the time being. Dirk Chocolate as well. He's making moves compared to the start he had last week now, or a lot of Tuesday. Uh, yeah, Lamp on the inside into lamp. seven. In the inside, is he going to have space? They come through. There's a brush with the wall for the Tauri on the outside. Lamp Defending, though, the Alpha Tari up the inside through into Castle. Very, very risky move there. We're going to switch back to the onboard now because this is an absolute battle. Of course, the timing tower not yet fully synced up to with where we're at in this race. The VSC playing with the minds of, uh, well, I guess those in control of that. But Adrian defending against Lamp right now for third position. And it appears that Wisp, although he started in third, his teammates picked up the baton, but it's Lamp. Very hungry for that podium position here as a reserve for MRL. Yeah, someone who's hungry as well. Domi, he's now behind. Little Bear, Little Bear on the hard tires. Not a lot he can do. Obviously, Domi starting this race in pole on those softs. He's flying past, but still Liam in control of the race. Yeah, it's wheel to wheel between Lamp and. Who is that? That is Adrian still into turn one, and Adrian's holding him around. Dirk Chocolate and Undertaker have had a little bit of contact. Undertaker getting swung around with a bit of a brush on the inside, and Crampy's netted P6 as a result now. Undertaker looking to defend against Cotters and Skybits behind. It's such a very intense race right now. We have an absolute train down through into turn three right now, and it's currently Lamp at the front of it. Adrian with a move up the inside through three. Big lock up there from Lamp, and that's Dirk into the rear of the Ferrari, and Undertaker into this and now it's a big collision through here in the third turn Dirk Chocolate just trying to get things under control drivers not giving him the time of day there and it looks like there is a full safety car as a result Lamp has maintained fourth position here yeah so we found out what it takes to get out a full safety car here and I'm interested to see if anyone chooses to put obviously those with damage are probably going to take that advantage here but We'll see those on the softs who started this race, switch or anything, or just hold on to position. But the likes of Liam and Squid, who were so far ahead, now they're going to get bunched up to the grid behind them. This grid right now, apart from that huge train you can see from the lamp all the way down to Wisp, they, everyone else sort of spaced out around the track. 
Derek Chocolate was having a fantastic race start. He was into good solid position there in fifth. Getting caught up in that turn three incidents, exactly what he didn't want to have happen with him. Of course, he's got good pace. We'll see what he's able to do here. It looks like he may have taken some damage. We'll jump on over on board with him. If he doesn't have damage, that's even better. And it doesn't look like he does on that front wing. But uh, with the safety car, I'll be surprised if any of these racers on softs opt to stay out. And it appears Liam, the race leader, has already decided to come in on cue, it would seem. And he's going to be going on to the yellow rim medium compound tires and this is where gambling is going to come into play unicorn is it going to be the mediums or is it going to be the hards because this is a very very early safety car yeah i think these guys on the mediums or the softs coming onto the mediums might suddenly be gambling for a second safety car maybe to switch onto softs at the end of this race because I'm not quite sure whether you can get a set of mediums around here to last the 22 laps that they're about to demand also worth noting liam Sticking in first place, but Little Bear now up into second. He's overtaken Squid. Obviously, Little Bear starting on the... Well, not starting on the mediums, but he... Uh, hards, but he's switched on to him after lap one. And now he's into second place. So, good start from the crown. Somebody who's having a fantastic race so far. Extreme in P4. Up 14 positions, Unicorn. Little Bear in second is up nine slots, as well as Squid. Uh, five places pretty well the rest of this grid has uh well <laughs> dropped from where they began yeah they, those two they are actually the only two little bear and extreme the only two not to have pitted and we're only four laps into this race so pretty pretty unseen stuff but yeah those are the only two people who haven't pitted in this race and like you said they're Seeing the benefits of that right now with 9 and 14 places gained respectively for the pair of them. Yeah, it's not like they're on the soft compound tires either here. They're both sitting on the hards. They're looking to go long. And they're in a position where should those guys on the mediums ahead of them, Liam for example, feel the need to come in maybe earlier and they don't see that safety car, those hards, who knows? It's oh, The difference in strategy we're going to see f unfold over the course of the next 22, 21 laps, depending on when the safety car comes in here. I am very excited. Yeah, the people who aren't excited, those sitting at racing point, you can see it's the Max and Lobo down there. Still, despite being on the safety car, they're still a fair way behind, so not a good start to the race for the pair of them. And it appears Robbo might have picked up damage here because he is still missing an end plate, despite having already pitted during this so not an excellent start for him and it's max as well he is in 17th now but he is in a damage free car yeah to give a little bit of humor to the situation that incident in turn three looked like a bunch of cars just showing up to have a coffee with one another if i'm being honest here and uh dirk chocolate might have been the table they were all sitting at in that situation because he was just stuck horizontal across circuit there yeah, it's a tough place to be around Bucky because there is, you can see the walls just next to these cars. There's nowhere to go if you spin, so you are just sort of a sitting duck and you're at the mercy of the other drivers to acknowledge the yellow flags and to slow down and to avoid uh, colliding with you any further. Obviously the rear of an F1 car in the game at least, a bit more, you know, there's not that fragile front wing. Yes. To take the damage, so... Yeah. He was in the best orientation he could have been. If he'd have been the other way around, he could have lost a lot more. And potentially lost the front wing. Well, that non... Well, the, the front wing not getting any damage definitely allowed him to get out in, in some decent position because, of course, that wing change is going to take a little bit longer in the pit lane. And the longer you sit in the pit lane, well, the worse it is, obviously. So the thing with that was he lucked out, but he didn't at the same time. So it was a bit of a, you know bittersweet uh, issue i think that no dropping five positions six positions is just a lost period but he didn't get the wing damage so he has a, an opportunity to fight back he's on these hards could go to the end yeah and he's in 11 it's not a bad position to be in at this stage of the race definitely still opportunity to pick up points for that mercedes and he is the only mercedes right now despite being in reserve so he is the title leader's only hope to sort of continue to 
add to their points standing this evening. Yeah, Mercedes. Only one uh, one dog in the fight today. Safety car coming in. Unicorn Liam now going to have to pace this grid. Yeah, we've already seen one start, and obviously that the start of the race was sort of inhibited by that VSC. But now, Codders receives a five-second penalty for a severe collision with Gauzy Egg. But the drivers, you can already see Little Bear getting side by side with Liam, ready for the restart. He's very eager. Yeah, and, and it looks we like Liam we're away. Wheel to wheel between the McLaren and the Williams down into turn one already. That's Squid and Little Bear fighting. Liam's had a good getaway. How's it going to go coming down into turn one? There's an Alfa Romeo on the inside. That's going to be extreme up into P3. Squid has Adrian looking at him on the inside coming down into turn three. He has the Ferrari on the inside. There's a little bit of contact. Everybody getting away squirrely there. Not too much contact though. Adrian sticking with him. He's on the inside coming down into turn three. He's made the move ahead of the Williams just into the turn. He's going to hold that inside. Crampy around the outside. Not able to get it done. Adrian holds fourth. What a restart we've had here already. Little Bear is so close with Liam there. It appears he dropped back and now Extreme is into third as well. And it's currently the two drivers on hards running second and third. There's another exchange and it looks like there's been some kind of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action between the Renault of Undertaker and Crampy. And Dirk Chocolate is into 10th position as well, so he took a position on this race start. And look at the intervals on this race restart. Not a lot of difference for these drivers, Unicorn. Yeah, there's a couple of people who have won and lost after that safety car and the subsequent restart. Squid, he's dropped a few places, but his teammate Domi obviously starting this race on pole position then having to serve that drive through penalty he's now back up to six oh already. and adrian has actually gone into the rear of the alfa romeo into turn 15 that's opened the door for squid and he's through the middle of the two drivers into third position here through turn 16 now and he's gotten away and extreme has had an issue in turn 15 he got pushed into the wall by adrian adrian and him i believe took damage i think extreme's missing that front right end plate and now there's a oh and that's the other williams excuse me of domi into the wall yeah, Domi not only into the wall, but he lost an end plate going into the back of Extreme, and that's Lamp past him now. And now Crampy passing Domi as well. So Domi comes into the pits to repair that front wing. But not a good start. And that's Lamp having a huge lock up through turn one. That's allowed Crampy straight up the inside. And now Squid and Angel, they're back side by side down through turn two. And that's Squid still clinging on to that third place, but. Oh boy, Crampy now. He's looking to see if he can squeeze past the Alpha Romeo. He's a little bit far back now, but Extreme looking at the Alpha Tauri. Wow, what a race restart we're having here. Things are very tight throughout this grid right now. You can see we've had a couple of laps now since the safety car has come in. It's Crampy looking at Extreme very tightly right now. Less than two tenths separating these two drivers. Yeah, and the tire benefit as well. You're crampy on these two lap old mediums compared to extreme six lap old hard tires. And it's Undertaker and Dirk Chocolate going side by side through turn seven. Dirk Chocolate losing out. He's now into P9 and Undertaker just ahead before the castle section. Obviously, no where for Dirk Chocolate to come back through there. There's an absolute train, a snake flowing through this circuit right now on the timing tower. We saw it in the rear of the Mercedes. Coming up through that castle section, it just looked like something else. Having all of those cars single file flying through that section of circuit right now. And it's Squid within half a second of Little Bear. Of course, Squid on these much fresher medium compound tires right now. He's got a great run, overtaken full swing here. Little Bear not oh, going to have a lot. Huge crash. Crampy's car is absolutely flying down the straight. He's come to a stop miles away from where he crashed. But that is a full course safety car. It's a max as well as DNF from this race. But Crampy's car went absolutely flying. I've never seen something quite like that in a less it's a max. But Crampy crashed in between turns 17 and 18, and he's ended up on the exit of 19. Very unfortunate. So we have our second safety car deployed here. We're having quite the opposite race to what we saw in EU Unicorn. No safety cars in that one, and we've had two already. Here in the opening 10 laps. Yeah, plus a uh, VSC as well to boot. So, yeah, a completely different race, like you were saying. And that's just the 
should we say beauty? I mean, of Baku, it's different race every time. And now, this unsafety car. Are we going to see the likes of Little Bear? Currently sitting in third. On this seven lap old hard, is he going to take advantage and come into the pit lane? This is going to be a really good opportunity for Little Bear because he's on these hards now. He's going to get a little bit more life out of them. We'll have to see if he decides to come in. Wow, what a race. What a race. We've had so much intensity. The pace uh, of this grid is quite, uh, quite good, I have to say. Quite matched. And we saw that on the restart. Everybody in close proximity. Of course, when cars that tight... On a circuit like this, uh, you're bound to see a mistake here and there. I mean, nobody is perfect, and it takes a serious amount of concentration to go start to finish, not a single error. I know I wouldn't be able to do it, but again, that's why I'm commentating, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm still flabbergasted from what I just saw from Crampy's car. I've never seen a car in this game take off like Crampy's did. I'm pretty sure he has it on board, so hopefully we're about to see that after the race if not someone who was behind him but absolutely shocking stuff back in not only have we seen that really odd photo finish on tuesday now we're seeing cars flying here on thursday and we still got two races after this one to go here at MRL. yeah the photo finish she said on tuesday it was a battle of the wings at the line i think it was two hundredths of a second that separated the two drivers on the line on tuesday so who knows, perhaps we could see something like that. Liam has a history here around the streets of Baku in the MRL, so we'll see if he's able to carry on that tradition of winning around here. Yeah, he seems pretty strong at the moment, but everyone in this grid, like you're just saying, so tight, and obviously the safety cars are helping keep this grid bunched together as close as they are, but at the moment, we are seeing everyone not really separated by pace and more race craft that's getting these moves done yeah of course during the safety car i'll take the time to remind everybody if you're enjoying the content help us out hit that follow button because we're live tuesdays at 8 p.m bst for racing as well as well today thursdays you're watching tier two and later after this race we have tier one action as well and on fridays now at 8 p.m bst we have another grid the mrl club division so, lots of super tight wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. If you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, hit that follow button. Of course, my name is Trifium. Joining me is Unicorn. And, uh, well, we saw the MRL EU grid on Tuesday. Didn't go quite like this. We didn't have a little bit of... Uh, well, there wasn't a lot of time to just sit and chat. There was always kind of something going on. We didn't have any safety cars to kind of diffuse the tension. But uh, we know how safety cars are. They just wind that tension right back up for a great restart. So we'll see how they go. Yeah, for every uneventful lap you have under safety car, you can guarantee it's going to be all worth it as soon as that thing comes into the pits and someone restarts this race for us. Because so far, it hasn't disappointed. And I'm sure we're not going to be disappointed once that... Mercedes comes in, presumably at the end of this lap as it's gone round again. Squid coming into the pit lane now. Jones also blinking. He's going to come in. And what tires are they going to go on? Jones is done. So the Alpha out of this race in Jones. Squid on to fresh mediums. Maybe he thinks he can take those to the end. And now, if there's no other penalty... Uh, no other safety car. He might have just pulled off a very good strategic move because those cars that were ahead of him, uh, those in the top eight, I believe, mean, probably won't be able to go to the end apart from those maybe on the fresh hards like Undertaker and Dirt. Yeah, interesting move from Squid. We'll see whether it pays off for him at the end of this race. Yeah, Baku. A strategic test. Not only for your tire wear and how you manage them, but for keeping that car out of the wall. And if he's able to keep that car out of the wall here around the streets of Baku, then he is in a very good position. Of course, he's almost into the rear of Robo there. He's caught the grid maybe a little bit quicker than he thought. But now all of these cars in the queue, as it were. And this queue currently being led by Liam in the Red Bull. 
And uh, I think I'd be safe to wager that we're going to have that safety car coming in here at the end of lap 10. Yeah, you'd hope so. But speaking of keeping it out of the wall, Little Bear, currently in second position at McLaren, he is missing a front right end point. So we'll see how that affects his pace on this restart. I don't know when he received that damage, but Liam ahead of him, he's got three in terms of damage, as are most of the cars behind him. So interesting to see how he fares once everyone's back up to racing speed. Yeah, Little Bear, not a driver people take lightly around the grid here in Tier 2. He's a very aggressive driver. He has one mission, and that is to get the car out into the points as best he can. And he does a very good job of doing that, Little Bear. We saw him battling very, very hard in Vietnam. I remember that. He was battling quite well through there. But uh, we'll have to see how he goes here. Damage is going to affect him. And yeah, like you said, the safety car is in this lap. Tires up, getting ready. And I do believe Liam has restarted this race. We've got Dirk Chocolate in the Mercedes. He's looking at the inside of Undertaker. He's Undertaker, though, late on the brakes in that Renault. Everyone's sort of holding station at the moment. But there goes Wiss past Dirk Chocolate between turn one and two. The yeah, Alpha Tari now up into fourth place. That's Robert being disqualified from the session. Yeah. Fortunately, getting disqualified for failure to serve a drive through penalty. It's a very tricky bit serving that penalty after a safety car. Less eventful restart, but it's Wisp again. Now looking to try and get past Undertaker. Backed out through turns five and six, but this is going to try it through turn seven. In the Alpha Tauri. Gadwin wheel to wheel coming into seven as well. He's on the inside of the Mercedes. That's Dirk. Dirk holding around the outside, getting through a little bit of a brush with the Red Bull. Gadwin, no slouch. He's going to come up through Castle here. It looks like Dirk might have tapped that wall on the front right wing. We'll have to see how the Finn hunts down the Brit there ahead. Yeah, and we only saw Dirk have one issue through Castle in qualifying, so he doesn't want to make a repeat of that. Yeah, it's Cotters. And Domai, they're going as there's three wide at the Williams and Domai sliding after being caught up with, I believe, Extreme in the Alfa Romeo. That's let Squid past Extreme and Lamp as well. He's passed the pair of them. Fortunately, to cause a bit better, a uh, bigger crash, a better crash. Yeah, right now Domi has his teammate Squid hunting him down on those much fresher medium compound tires. He's made it through. He's edging ahead now. They're coming down the pit straight. And there is another car in the mixture. That is the Alfa Romeo of Extreme, and he's looking at the Williams of Squid down into turn one. He has the inside line. Who's going to hold it through, though? That's Squid around the outside. Is he going to get pushed off? Not enough. So he's still fighting with the Alfa Romeo coming into turn two. Extreme lunging just out in front, down through turn two, and he holds it. Well, makes it into 11th and holds it. And meanwhile, Wisp and Undertaker having an exchange through turn three. Wisp into third position. And Little Bear is struggling right now with that wing damage. It's going to be Wisp looking at him very tightly through this 12th lap. And I think we might see it happen either in Sector 2 or, of course, down that iconic pit straight. And we have a lot of tight battling throughout this grid right now as Squid and Cotters have exchanged through into turn six. Yeah, Cotter seems to be struggling right now on that Ferrari. He's just been passed by both of the cars ahead of him, I do believe. So, not too good on the pace at the moment. And it's just a train, a parade of cars coming through here right now in this fight for second position because Little Bear, he's struggling. He's lost five and a half seconds to Liam ahead. Yeah, and now the battle for second as well. These cars constantly exchanging positions. Obviously now Wisp looking to get past Little Bear as well as Gadwin. He's going to try and take Undertaker down towards turn one. But Liam, 5.6 seconds up the road at the moment in the lead of this race. Utterly dominant in the first half of this Grand Prix. As he sets the fastest lap of the race. But here we go. Wisp in the Avatari not going to try anything down into turn one. Is he going to be able to be more successful? 
on the second DRS straight, or the first, depending on how you look at it. DRS and overtake enabled. So assuming the McLaren, there he goes, up the inside, the fresher medium compound tyres working for him at the moment. And that's Undertaker carrying a lot of speed as well through turn three. He nearly ran into the back of the McLaren. Yeah, Undertaker needs to watch it here, making those moves and taking those risks right now is giving Finn an open door and not Finn, excuse me, the Finn, Mr. Gadwin, of course, in the Red Bull, a very wide open door for a podium position here. And uh, if I know him, he's very hungry for one of those. And uh, a circuit like Baku, where I've seen him drive well before, would be a great way to kick off his podiums this season. Of course, he had one briefly. Penalties, of course, putting him into fourth through no fault of his own. But of course, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Undertaker is sticking with Little Bear quite well. Gadwin just holding station. Oh, there's another incident. Squid pointing the wrong way, side by side with Extreme. Apologies for interrupting down through turn 14. Squid pointing the wrong way, having to let traffic go before turning his car around. Well, we'll have to see if it's in time here as Domi is flying through, and it looks like he's gotten that car out of the way now. You can see him moving, but quite slowly down into turn 15, and Squid, as we said, it's one thing to get the good tires, but he's out of this race struggling through turn 15 there and Domi had the front row seat to that and that is a VSC deployed yeah, a little bit into the pits finally for a front wing and a fresh set of mediums and that's going to drop him right down the grid here he is also selling a panel oh no it's just a little bit of lag there he is he is released and it's going to come out in 10th there after running at the front for so long. There we go. Green flag racing resuming. It's Dirk Chocolate with an excellent start. He's on the inside looking at the other towering of it, Adrian, but not having the correct ankle down into turn four. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I just saw somebody take a speeding through, well, a, a, a drive through penalty for speeding under VSC conditions. And it may, it may, I certainly hope it wasn't have been Dirk. I didn't see it on my end. I was watching Dirk try. But of course, if we can get a verification on who is still yet to serve a drive through here. Well, I mean, we'll figure it out eventually. Who's going to be pitting at this point? Uh, it looks like it's extreme. Oh, and so the oh, Alfa Romeo not going to be too happy about that at all. <laughs> He's on a very decent strategy considering the tires right now. Well, Little Bear also has one, so... Couple of the drivers here. What a unique race this has been. Dirk Chocolate right now. He's being hunted down by Extreme. Extreme on these quicker medium compound tires right now. Not a lot that the Mercedes is going to be able to do here. Because DRS is going to be enabled, I'd, if I'm not mistaken, for this Alfa Romeo. Yes, it is. And he's caught him up even before needing the DRS. But as he has that uh, drive through penalty, he's not going to serve it. He's going to stay out. Make his way yeah, through Dirk, the grid as best he can. Dirk running a, a fairly low amount of battery right now. Whereas Extreme, a lot more in the tank. But like you said, he has got that drive through penalty. So he's looking like he's going to make the most of this DRS on this lap. And then presumably come in either this lap or the next before he gets disqualified a little bit. He's serving his. And that has dropped him to the back of this grid. Meanwhile, Gadwin still in this fight for a podium position. Undertaker is the prey. Gadwin, the hunter here. And he wants that. He wants to help Liam out. He wants to put these Red Bulls as far out into Constructor's contention as they can. Because guess what? The two Mercedes, Jay and Kai, not in this race presently. It is a one-legged fight. And it's Dirk driving in P7 right now who's carrying the gauntlet for the squad and he's doing quite a good job considering how his race went on Tuesday so good to see him in P7 we'll see where he's able to land with uh, 11 laps remaining yeah Dirk's Baku adventures have certainly been a roller coaster he's had a lot of highs and a lot of lows so I'm interested to see where he finishes <laughs> this race hashtag Dirk's Baku adventures you guys heard it here first 
Lamp hunting down Skybits right now. Skybits not having the most ideal Baku race. Neither is Lamp as they've both had to come in a multiple amount of times here. Lamp once more than Sky. But of course, Lamp on these medium compound tires. Fresh medium compound tires to the end of this race. He's shown good pace throughout the race and throughout qualifying. We'll see what he's able to do because everybody ahead of these two. And of course, Little Bear behind them. They're on older tires. Yeah, and tires, you just mentioned them, but it's worth noting how they're going to come into their effect at the end of this race. Those who came in under the early safety car for mediums might start to struggle in the coming few laps. Ten laps left in this it's race. It's a switch from Lamp to the inside of Skybits. Skybits was gradually trying to hold off that outside, but Lamp said, don't worry about it. I'll move up the inside. Skybits, though, holding well in 10th for the moment, but they've both netted. Well, Skybits is into the points because they've passed Cotters, who's come into the pit lane now. And now it's instead of a fight for 11th, it's a fight for the final points position, and I imagine the Ferrari on his debut in Lamp going to want to be getting a point at the very least. Yeah, and Gorzieg, he's had an issue out of turn four. He's putting the wrong way. You're about to sit. Skybits and Lamp come past them. There is the pass on the inside. Fair amount of damage on the front right of that wing. Obviously, it's cramping already out of this race. Gorzieg started the back, but now up into 11th. He was in the points before that incident. For those just tuning in, you are 16 laps through MRL Tier 2 Azerbaijan Grand Prix action. My name is Strifium. Joining me as always is Unicorn. And in just under one hour, we're going to be back here commentating yet again another Misfits Racing League Tier 1 race. And uh, I'm very excited to see what the qualifying ends up being in that one. Gadwin, meanwhile, DRS on the rear of Undertaker. Is Undertaker going to be able to hold off the fin? Gadwin looking to the inside. He has a good run, but he's being patient. He knows he has good opportunity here. And look how tight he shaves that inside curbing through turn one. And it's extreme now. Finally coming in to serve that drive through penalty that we knew he had. Of course, Dirk is going to be moving ahead quite well through into sixth position. As a result, Domi gets ahead of the Alfa Romeo as well. Where is Skybits going to be? He's currently under threat from Lamp. Lamp up the inside. A little bit of a lock up there. Skybits around the outside holding. Lamp doing good to just stay patient. Stick behind that McLaren. Is he going to have a good run out of turn two here? I wish we could go on board with him, unfortunately. I think it's a little bit too loud over there with the rev glitch, as you can hear. Yeah, just a little side note. One of these guys battling there. He's in line with man. There is Gauzy Egg retired. He did that through Castle car wasn't in the way so no safety car but little bear and cotters did well to avoid the car tense battling throughout this race it's been wild and all of these tire differences are gonna make for an exciting finish i think as a lot of these front runners are starting to get on some pretty worn tires yeah and it'll be interesting to see whether the likes of dirk and undertaker can take those hard tires to the end of this race. I do imagine that they will be able to. Whether the same can be said for Gadwin, his tyres 14 laps old, and then mediums as well, not hard, so he's going to struggle if he wants to get to the end of this race. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him come into softs, but at the same time, he probably doesn't want to go up this incredible track position as he takes third place from Undertaker. Greasing pass with the use of DRS and ERS. But Undertaker's not finished with the Red Bull. He's going to have DRS down towards turn three. You can see there. Overtake enabled on both cars, but it's the rear wing of Undertaker that's open. Slipstreaming behind. Gadwin takes the outside line. Gadwin, not a little bit surprised that he was there so early. And it is the Renault now back into third place. But again, Gadwin late on the brakes down towards turn four around the outside. He's holding on. And it's side by side. You can see this. Adrian's just behind them as well. Gadwin now up the inside, but it's Undertaker going to be retaining third place for the time being. Now yeah, Adrian trying to poke his nose in while these two are battling, and Gadwin kind of giving him the, hey, I'm busy here. You give me a second. We can fight after because he wants this podium, and Adrian wants it just as bad. But Undertaker defending very well against the Finn, and uh, well, we'd love to see the clean battling there. Sky Pits and Lamp, they're doing exactly the same as well. Lamp coming through. Loose chicane, and it's Little Bear off 
out of turn two in the off-road, so it doesn't look like he's making any attempt to uh, rectify that car either, so not quite sure what's happened there. Maybe missed his braking, just shot the turn, maybe had, a, had an issue, but not getting going, and he's been disqualified for parking it there. So stewards are going to be speaking with him after the race about that. We'll have to see what happened. Maybe it was a disconnection of some kind. Yeah, maybe even a failure of some sort of hardware. But here we go. We are seeing Gadwin come into the pit lane. He is the first of these front runners, presumably getting off of these medium compound tires. Well, I imagine it could only be softs at this point. And he's gone on to mediums. mediums. Very interesting. Coming like out of the Red Bull camp. Well, that has opened the door for Adrian to do as much catching up to Undertaker as he possibly can. To try and net himself a podium position here. Of course, let's take a look at the position changes throughout this race. There's been quite a bit of it here in this one. Extreme up 11 positions into 7th right now. Yeah, this race... Certainly hasn't been bland. Now the green a little bit spaced out than what we saw at, at the beginning. Obviously the safety cars helping a little bit with the bunch, but the pace here as well, very even. We've seen a lot of tight battling and around Baku. Drivers gotta be extra careful because it's a track that you can overtake on, but the still walls very tight. So overtaking possible, but not yeah. risky. Somebody who's in hot water here, Dirk Chocolate, because Domi absolutely clipping in that Williams behind him. He's looking at him into turn 15. He makes sure to hold it because that would be very, very late for a dive, of course. But less than half a second is the gap. It's currently the tightest gap on grid. P5 on the table for the Williams squad. And I imagine they'd love to see it here around Baku. Yeah, and it wasn't too many laps ago that Domi set the fastest lap of the race on those tires, relatively fresh. Minions and now Undertaker coming into the pits as well as Wisp and Wisp has gone for the soft tyres so that's what we were expecting from the other drivers Undertaker going for the softs as well so maybe we'll have to see how Gadwin able to stack up here on the fresh mediums Wisp is on a very interesting strat of course he started this race in P3 he's fallen into P5 but uh, Dirk Chocolate under serious threat in comparison to these softs, nothing he can do against that Alpha Tauri down into turn three. And Wisp is into fourth position already. Yeah, I think Wisp's made quite a good strategic decision there to come on to these softs, as has Undertaker. We'll interested to see how they get past the drivers around them. See so Wisp a little bit further back, especially when compared to Adrian and Liam up at the front. Not miles ahead. At the moment. Well, the big question is Liam. He's off 17 seconds ahead of Adrian. When is he going to come in? Because I don't think he's going to make it to the end on mediums without any kind of puncture here. And he's going to start to lose major time to Wisp. Because Wisp's going to be on these softs to the end as well as Undertaker. And Gadwin's in a unique position as well. He's on these medium compound tires. And because he's on those mediums, he can hammer them literally as hard as he can through his race. To get as fast, well, as close to these points as he can in the third, four, and five running positions right now. 2.5 is the gap to him and Dirk, and it's coming down fast. Yeah, and Liam stayed out here, and I would have thought, like you said, you'd want to come in for softs a little bit early uh, than he is, because he's not going to quite get the full use out of them, and he's at risk as well, not just from Wisp, but Domi as well, so, but Domi, he's already at risk. It's Wisp. Absolutely flying on these soft tires. Domi setting the fastest lap of the race, but it's Wisp coming through the P3. There's Gadwin on the fresh tires, setting the fastest lap. And that's on mediums, so these guys on the softs, they're going to be absolutely flying right now. And surely this is an indication to Liam that he might be in a little bit of danger, but they're so far behind. If he can nurse those tires to the end, he should be okay. But Domi up the inside, down into turn three, not quite being able to get the move done. This yeah, fight breathing well a little bit of life into things here. And Skybits is looking for some positions as well. Up the inside, coming down the pit straight. He gets it into 10th position. And that drops Cotters out of the points. But of course, we'll see if Cotters is able to do anything about it in just a moment's time. 
because they will have DRS down into turn three as well, and their tires are not that different from one another here. Ferrari, DRS, not a lot of battery at his disposal, though. And it doesn't look like he's going to have any opportunity to catch back up with that McLaren at the moment. Meanwhile, Undertaker, Gadwin, looking at Dirk Chocolate. Dirk Chocolate on the inside, or outside, excuse me, as Gadwin wraps around the inside. What a move there. Dirk Chocolate now, Undertaker not too far behind him into turn 15. The Renault stays behind for now. Yeah, not exactly a common overtaking spot where Gadwin's come through there, but he has done it and he's made that move. Well, that's huge for Gadwin right now because Dirk holding up Undertaker as well, Unicorn. Yeah, absolutely. It's just going to give Gadwin a little bit of extra time because he's on those medium tires. So presumably the tire as Undertaker comes through on Dirk Chocolate. But right now he's just out of DRS range, but now he is. So you can see the slingshot that DRS has given him. And Gadwin, despite being on fresh tires, they're still uh, mediums. But speaking of fresh tires, Liam, he is on the soft tires now. And he's just ahead of Adrian, but he's not going to cause him too many problems given that he's on 15 lap old hards. And maybe Adrian now a little bit worried because his teammate, only 4.3 seconds behind, but on much faster tires. Yeah, and the fastest lap point definitely on the table here. I think Undertaker might be trying to get it just in this pursuit of Gadwin right now. Might have an opportunity. And as I say, he's actually down his sector one time. So completely erase that comment. But of course, Gadwin defending against the Renault into turn seven here, holding that inside very, very tight right now. And another question for a lot of these racers is penalties. Baku, not easy to get a lot of exceeding track limit or cutter, corner cutting penalties. But of course... We've seen a lot of pit stops. There's a lot of confusion and dynamics in this race right now. And right now, only 11 out of the 18 drivers that started it remaining here. Of course, Tier 1 action after this race. We're on lap 22 out of lap 26. Yeah, speaking of penalties, a few drivers do have them, I believe. Whether they've been served or not, I'm not too sure. But Adrian, Domi, Dirk, they've all got them. So it'll be interesting to see whether they play a role. Obviously, the grid's still fairly tight here. And cross people positions here at the end of this race but it's Undertaker on Gadwin now on the soft tires versus the Minions and it is the Renault coming past as Wisp sets the fastest lap of the race currently sitting in third place but is Undertaker going to take that now DRS he has had it but not quite he's set the far his personal best but not faster than Wisp in that Alpha Towery yeah fastest lap by right now that Wisp the 142.2 so, very quick, Undertaker, a 142.9, his quickest thus far, Domi, a 142.8. And as I say, Extreme just shatters that, a 140.9 from the Alfa Romeo. So, he's kind of pushing to get that lap away from those guys in the front, and I imagine the Alfa crew are going to be happy about that in the combined constructors battle as well. Yeah, he's not far off the qualifying pace there. Uh, about a second, two... Well, two seconds off of pole, but we saw a lot of our drivers here in the 39s, so a very impressive lap for race trim in the Alfa Romeo. Obviously, we are at the tail end of this race, so fuel not quite weighing the cars down as much as it would have been at the start, but still carrying a little bit more than he would in qualifying. But now, the two Alfa Tauris, Wisp has caught up his teammate Adrian, and he's going to breeze past on this straight, you would imagine. But are we going to see them both on the podium here? Or is Domi or potentially Undertaker going to take that third place away from one of these Alpha Tauris? Presumably Adrian. Especially if he has got that penalty that the race director says and that isn't served. So here you go. Wisp, DRS, ERS flying by his teammate who doesn't use any ERS to try and defend. So Team orders in the end. I mean, there's not much point in uh, defending against those softs right now, especially considering if there's any opportunity, if Liam makes a mistake, Wisp could net a lead and uh, potentially a win. Yeah, 100%. And now it's going to be interesting. Two laps to go. Is Adrian going to be able to hold on to that final podium spot? Or is Domi, whose tyres now are getting a little bit older as this race goes on is he gonna be able to catch him 2.7 seconds is the gap right now 
and another lock up down into turn five for the Williams, but soldiering on. Yeah, the biggest question mark in my brain right now is this fight between Undertaker and Gadwin because Gadwin on these medium compound tires. Are they going to have a little bit more pace in these softs come the final lap? And he's maintaining within two seconds right now. If he's able to catch up and stay within that DRS, I, I think, I, I, I'd like to see it happen for Gadwin because his strategy right now is just wild. Yeah, I think Undertaker's probably got this in the bag. The soft tire's only going to be five or six lap old at the end of this race. So I think... That Renault is perfectly safe in terms of tyre pace on the Red Bull. But yeah, I think as much as Gadwin presumably wants the top five finish, it's unlikely for the Red Bull here. Yeah, speaking of Red Bulls, Liam crossing into lap 25. Now we're on now on the penultimate lap of this race. You can see on screen all the stops. Who has been lapped at this point in the race? Nobody because of these safety cars. Of course, Cotter's 58 seconds off the lead. Gadwin now crossing the line. He's in sixth. And as I would have liked to see it, it looks like he is dropping off Undertaker significantly right now. Just so much pace difference between the two compounds. Speaking of pace difference, Domi's made a second to Adrian in the last lap. He's really pushing this Williams all the way. Now another two tenths gained down to turn three and he might be able to get into DRS range here before the start finish straight and then at that point Adrian might just be a sitting duck for the Williams here yeah it's going to be tough to defend against mediums four laps younger than the tires he's presently on and of course there's no point in pitting to try and salvage if he had that he, he should have done it much earlier I think Adrian he should have come in much earlier. He's kind of just made the gamble here. Is he going to hold on to it? He's got a one lap to go to hold this Williams with the, well, one of, if not the longest straights on the calendar. I mean, I don't know how it compares to, to, to Vietnam at this point, but uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And of course, whoa, thank you to Mr. Raggy. For the host of 26 Viewers, welcome to the Rag Nation. You're tuning in for the penultimate lap of Tier 2 Baku right now. My name's Trifium, and joining me is Unicorn. Welcome. Yeah, here comes Domi. Overtake enabled, and Adrian is completely out of ERS. This is a bit threatening. I do believe this is the... Let's go back to the longest thing. I think it's the second longest, if not the longest, flat out section. Obviously, it's not a straight. It turns 19 and 20 there. Sort of not avoiding that but it is the last lap here and Domi well within DRS range on that Alpha Tower ahead of him he should get passed down into turn 3 whether Adrian can cling on keep DRS range down to the stop finish Dirks as lap, yeah. Dirks gotten taken by Lamp now and the Ferrari is into 6th position and as I said it that was Domi getting in front of Adrian of course Domi has front end damage on that car and he's showing fantastic pace on these medium compound tyres in comparison to these hards, of course, there's that, that life difference in them. But the damage on Domi right now, he's just showing fantastic pace in that Williams. Adrian's also missing an M-plate. Ooh, so. and Lamp, excuse me, Unicorn. He's had an issue through into turn three, and that's put Dirk Chocolate back into sixth position and nearly a second ahead of the Ferrari, and he's missing that front right M-plate as well. So we have a couple of battles coming down here on the last lap. Dirk Chocolate in that reserve role for Kai Bacini today. Getting some points, hopefully, for the Mercedes squad. Of course, one dog in the fight as opposed to two. Jay not able to make the race today either. I don't know if Adrian's had an issue, but he's 2.7 seconds down on Domi now. So now three seconds. I think he's had a collision with the wall, and that's Undertaker behind him. He's got a little bit of damage, but nowhere uh... near what Adrian has. And he's now within DRS range. Is this Renault as Liam crosses the line in first? Is Adrian's Undertaker about to get mugged. He's about to get be. mugged. <laughs> it's going to be he tight. Doesn't want this to happen, but we're seeing exactly what we saw on Tuesday. This time for fourth place. Here's the Renault. DRS enabled both cars. Pretty much out of ERS. Down towards the line. It's Undertaker who takes the position. I can't wait to see the Yeah, and it's Lamp. Lamp front end plate damage or not. Unicorn, he's coming wheel to wheel with Dirk Chocolate right now. DRS wheel to wheel action. Dirk Chocolate trying to hold sixth as he can. But it's the Ferrari moving ahead into six, And he's getting the weave on in front of the Mercedes. He crosses ahead of Dirk Chocolate into six, And that 
is the type of finishing you want to see here around Azerbaijan. Of course, the Battle of Baku. Gadwin in ninth. Cotters getting ahead of Extreme into 10th position on the final lap. And he's going to try and claim some points in its Extreme with no front wing on that Alfa Romeo. However, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he has still, if I can find it, taken that fastest lap out of the equation. So he has... Managed to get the fastest lap, completely remove it, and Howard Penalty is going to go extreme into 10th position. If I'm not mistaken, we'll have to take a look at the grid, but that might have been a P10. Yeah, so a couple of points if he has got that fastest lap for extreme, despite, like you said, no front wing. Liam getting the win once again in Baku, second time for the Red Bull. He did it last season. He's done it again. So, two-time winner now of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix for Liam. Congratulations to him. And what a race. What a race we have just seen here for Tier 2. Liam, with the race win from second on this grid, the Canadian coming across in the Red Bull for the race win in Baku. Wisp in second position. Position, Excuse me. He started in third, of course, and he had a very unique race. Looking forward to seeing how that went for him. Domi in the Williams, rounding out your top three here. And Extreme coming across at the line getting it into 10th position, and getting the extra point for the Alfa Romeo team. They are going to be thrilled. Of course, Undertaker 4th, Adrian 5th, Lamp making his reserve debut in 6th, Dirk Chocolate from 10th to 7th, you love to see it, and Gadwin, man, every single time we see the Finn in the Red Bull finisher race, there is a massive margin from where he began and where he finished, and you love to see that. Skybits in 9th, Extreme in 10th, Cotters, Gazieg, Twitch, aka squid <laughs> i said twitch but it's squid i know you jones crampy it's a max little bear and robbo rounding out the rest of the drivers that started this race of course unicorn closing comments before we raid a member of the yeah. community Absolutely. again baku not only delivers at the start and with tight battling throughout but that last lap again even more exciting this time more battles down towards the line and not only on track but also i do believe after that not only Liam winning the race, both Liam and Domi, I think, jumping Kai Bushini in the championship standing. So the drivers' championship really hotting up now, especially after Kai Bushini obviously scoring no points here this evening. So everything to play for here in MRL tier two. As oh yeah. We, what's this? Round seven. Uh, and well, what a race that was. It was fantastic racing, of course. For those of you looking to jump on into a fun racing community, we love you all. This is why we do it for the viewers, for the community. My name's Striffium, and join the Misfits, guys. We have a great community. Join us in Discord. If you feel like racing in the league, you can apply, but that's not all we're about. We're all about family, friends, and community. So if you're looking to jump in, looking for a crew to race with, come on over. We are not, uh, we don't bite, and we're all pretty, pretty friendly. So that's going to wrap up our stream today. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, all the fun socials. We are going to raid somebody in just a second here, as soon as I can find it. But for those of you who enjoyed the race, we're going to be back in just half an hour to do it all again. Tier 1 racing action, guys. And uh, that has been a very, very intense season, I have to say. And of course, tomorrow, for those of you who uh, it may be a little bit late for, tomorrow, 8 p.m. BST, we have the club division coming around Baku as well. And Unicorn, you'll be joining me for that as always, I imagine. So it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, indeed. I can't wait to see Baku in action again. So, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. We're going to head over and raid someone in just a moment. But, of course, some closing messages as we always play. And uh, we'll see you guys in a bit for Tier 1 action. Thanks a lot.